<laughs> you know what? So <laughs> even before we came on set, a lot is happening. And it tells you the caliber of person I have in the studio now. And if you heard that song in the background, I mean, it's everything. But the big question is, how do I even introduce him? Where do I start from? Where do I start from? Because, you see, he's, he's not just a rapper. He's also an incredible uh, singer. His singing voice is amazing. He's a producer. When we talk about production, this man does his own songs. Like, he sits down, picks the keyboard, starts playing stuff, adds stuff to it. And he started creating tracks. When he was 16, what were you doing when you were 16 years? Me, I don't know. <laughs> but he's worked with the legendary Reggie Rock Stone. You name them, and he's done stuff with them. And his background is, is rich. I mean, when we talk of Osibisa, his father was part of it. I mean, just name it. His uncles are doing, his cousins are doing things. So it's like arts is in the family. And you can say, this particular apple did not fall far from the tree. In fact, he fell right under the tree. And describing his music is something that will be difficult. Why? He does everything. Hip life, he was there from the beginning. Hip hop, he's the one who's been, he's one of the people who's been holding it. When we talk of high life, he's there. I listened to one of his, his songs and I'll ask him about it. In 2011, I don't know what he was thinking about when he did that particular song. We'll, we'll talk about it. But he has soul, electronic music. The guy is doing all of that. And as a solo artist, he shines. But it becomes worse when he teams up with one of my favorite, One Love. When they become FOK and Charlie, there is war. And they tackle very controversial issues head on. Like, the things that you and I cannot talk about are the very things that they get into the studio and then they split all those bars. And when he dives into electronic music, fused with Afrobeats, bro, you know, Charlie, that's why I forget it. And he's also a filmmaker. Because when you look at even the songs he produces, you, you, you read down there and produced by, written by, shot by, I'm like, yo, why? You want to do everything. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the multifaceted artist, Mensa in Ooh, the studio. Wow. Mensa, how are uh, you doing? Please. Are you, <laughs> I, would, I need a copy of this intro so I can just copy it and use it as my CV. I beg. <laughs> but, but your CV will be like 34 pages. This is just yeah. like, this is just like two minutes. I was like, who is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. It's you oh, I'm talking about, wow. bro. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, very kind. Words. How are you Thank doing? You. I'm very well, thank you. Mm. I'm excited today. Right. Yes, my, my mother was born today. Oh. Yes, so right. it's my mother's birthday. So. It's your mother's birthday. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Shout outs to Shout her. Shout outs to Auntie Charity. Yeah, yes. Auntie Charity. And yes. it's also my co-host, Lily. It's her birthday today. Too. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, she, she, so must be, Lily she must be great she and, is. and tough. Very. Yes. Very tough in, yes. in every sense of the word. Yes, she's yes, very yes, tough. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Welcome once again. Thank you, sir. Thank right, you very so, much. Right, so, I mean, when we talk about Mensa, we talk about music. So I want to ask you something. If I take music from your life, what is left? <laughs> the father of some children who don't respect me at all. <laughs> I'm just a driver, a chef, a room cleaner. Just, you know, just Listen, a houseboy. I want to children. be able to I'm conduct serious. this interview. Honestly, if you take you the music away from me, right. the people who control my life are children. My children. Right. Mm, yes. How they, many of them? They keep me broke. <laughs> I even have other people's children as my own. So let me say about seven. Seven. So, most of that music is just the cleaner. a useless man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Producers, please get me inside. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, I, no, really, to be honest with you, yes, yeah. if I'm not like making music, mm -hmm. I'm really just. Um, <laughs> yeah, honestly, <laughs> and trying to clean my home and my, you know, surroundings and playing table tennis. Okay. Okay. You That's that. what I do these days. And recently I've discovered Sudoku. Yeah, Sudoku. And do you know what? I always thought that I would never be able to do it because mathematics was not my thing. But I woke up one day mm -hmm. and I saw a Sudoku thing and I started working on it and it just worked for me. So I've just been doing that. You've been doing that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah. Interesting. So <laughs> then let's talk about the music because yes. what, what you're telling me? <laughs> boring. Normal guy stuff. You no, know? because I mean, I, I don't want to get into that. But let's talk about the music. So when you and Kukuachi entered the studio, what were you thinking about? Hey! I say hey. What is this reference? I mean, what were you guys thinking about when you decided to enter the studio in Dansoman? You saw oh Apiatus and all of that. What That's were you thinking crazy. about? This is, you know, this is FBI kind of CIA kind of. Digging. No, I mean, kill dog. Yeah. You're into the wow. studio with him. Bro, you're not stopping. You're just going deeper and deeper. Oh, no, I'm just asking questions. So, kill dog was a friend of mine who <laughs> was bounced from America because she was misbehaving. 
<laughs> and then when, he, when his father brought him to Ghana, I was the first friend that he made. <laughs> I mean, so his father regretted. <laughs> of all people. <laughs> Why would he be the first friend he yeah, was to yeah, make? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was the you you life was inside. Yeah. But we were about 14, 13, I think. You were 14? Yeah, yeah, 14. Went to studio, campsite studios. Yeah. At that time, the engineer then was our very own impeccable appear to in the mix and he was not in the mood <laughs> appear to in the mix but not in the mood like who are these two you know in those days right mm -hmm. they will sell you no you take your own tape cassette okay and you have two takes mm -hmm. if that's you, true yes if you record it in tia in other that's it <laughs> and then they'll just record it and then they'll just dab it onto the tape cassette for you to go right. So, and Kill Dog was my friend who, um, Ghanaian, Kwekwotri, he was from um, Detroit, I think. Hmm. His mom was African-American. He had, he had had a very traumatic experience as a young man. I'm yeah. just going into this. You know, um, his, his older brother shot his mom. He had, his older brother had just come back from the Gulf War and was going through like a PT PTSD, a PTSD yeah. and just one day just opened fire on his own mother. So... You know, he has to be removed from that kind of environment. Mm. And, you know, my mom, my mom, my household was always, you know, a place where, you know, all the kids used to hang out. Yeah. So my mom really yeah. embraced him. Right. Um, and then, you know, he was such a good writer. Okay. You know, I mean, he's a young kid. So even if you couldn't rap cry, the slurs, <laughs> the slang snow was over. And so, you know, I like to, I mean, my whole thing is that I like to stay close to people who inspire me. Okay. So, so you know, we're kind of, you know, just bouncing off each other. Do you remember what, what you guys did in the studio that day? I'd much rather not. Because <laughs> this is the thing that makes me cringe, and I'll just be like, oh my God. <laughs> or you think you gave me the vim to do this, you know? I, now I see why Pyotus was not in the mood. <laughs> in the mix. Was it, was it that bad? It's, it's, I mean, in hindsight, I mean, you know, what can I see as a 14 year old? What do I know? Yeah. I remember the lyrics. I re oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Let's move on. Let's continue, please. Yeah. But we're rapidity rap rap. We're rapping. You're just rapping, yeah, 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 rapping and all rap. that. Yeah. So, so at, at that point, would you say that is when you felt like, you know what, this is what I'm going to do? I mean, Music. yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I am. Um, because at that point, that was like, you know, there's always something else that I was doing that mm -hmm. was very studious in a sense, because I was taking very intense piano lessons. I was playing piano for church. Right you know, in an Anglican church in a very kind of strict, mm -hmm. stiff way, you know, playing. Sometimes I'll go and play a pipe organ in, in Takradi and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I knew that there was something in there that, right. you know, was, you know, for me. And I also liked to write. Oh, okay. So English comprehension at school. Mm -hmm. and spelling, spelling mm -hmm. B. Mm -hmm. So when you combine those things, there was a kind of, you know, and then um, I remember I, 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 also got invited to be a radio host um, when I was around that age, you know, like 13, 14. Right. Called a Golden Child mm -hmm. on, on, on Gold FM, you know. So all those things were kind of leaning towards, and my mom was teaching me how to write in Fanti, like okay. to read and write in Fanti. So yeah. I knew that, be it subconsciously or intentionally, I was being prepared for something, for something. like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and you were there the start of hip life, yes. when it all started. Yeah. The vision that you guys saw for hip life, is that what it is now? Um, <clears throat> I'm not somebody who has <laughs> vision. <laughs> I mean, how can you tell me this? You know, I, I have intuition. Okay. That's what I create with, with intuition and um, just being connected to things and, and, um, and being observant, you know? Right. So for me, when I got the chance to work with Reggie, mm -hmm. It was just a, an opportunity for me to really be in the same space with the person who blew my mind the most as a, as a teenager. Mm -hmm. And this is this guy who's now saying, no, man, I want you to write music together. I want you to produce for me. It's like, wow. So I wasn't really thinking about, you know, when you're in it, you don't think about, okay, this is where it could go. But yeah. after I released my first album, uh, Republic, with mm -hmm. the you know, song with VIP and mm -hmm. so on and so forth, I quickly realized that if I don't do something proactive, I will kind of plateau very quickly, you know? Hmm. And so I kind of had my siblings help me to buy buy some coins and, you know, travel to kind of educate myself a little bit yeah. and learn more about, you know, music creation and, hmm. and hmm. engineering and how to make it sustainable. Okay. 
for me because that's something that is very difficult to have as a creative in these parts mm. to have a career that you can say you've grown within the, through the years mm. you've developed and learned different things and that makes you relevant and right. not desperate you mm. know because you know when you look at our greats and people who are greats and people who even inspired us they've had really difficult lives you know i mean we just lost kk kabobo a few months ago and yeah. that was one of the most heartbreaking things for me because a few months before that he was on, on the radio talking about the hardship and yeah. this is like an age-old story for all our creatives so exactly you know exactly. I, I just really had to find things that i could do on the side remain creative but not necessarily in the front line or you know in the limelight mm. but still i enjoy thoroughly mm. you know and that's really what i, I so when, when you look at how hip life as it was currently is now what they call it Afrobeat. i tried to avoid the question you brought me <laughs> back okay cool yes <laughs> i mean when, when you look at it now what do you make of it it's two sides. I mean, it's, it's grown. It's, mm -hmm. you know, Nigerians got involved and it grew exponentially. Right. It's a worldwide phenomenon, mm -hmm. which is great. Mm -hmm. People are making money of it. People are making a living out of it. Once again, it's about sustainability and yeah. integrity in, in creating music. Because that's the only way you can make the music stay. Right. So I don't want a situation where we are being pawned and we are just being used because it's the cool thing and then we get discarded. Mm. So that's the thing that I fear. And when, as Ghanaians, we look at how immense this thing can be, we mm -hmm. can also be driven to just want to go in that direction and not create... Create our own good, stuff. Yeah, and create good stuff, you yeah. know? It, it's, that's, so that's what I'm worried about. And I'm, I'm more concerned about build, being able to build uh, an are you, industry. Are you that? Losing the quality in terms of the originality of our a music? A little our bit, sound. a little bit, a little bit, mm. a little bit. But I, I don't want to knock creatives i don't want to criticize yeah. creatives because i know how difficult it is and i know why sometimes we all want to make the same thing because that'd be what they pop you see what i mean exactly and exactly. everybody wants a way out mm -hmm. so it's hard for you to see the thing where they pop and be like oh you know what i'm going to make some complicated some deep music and because yeah. blah blah it's privileged kind of things you know yeah. so yeah. it's a struggle but i just things are changing uh, but do the structure support people there's no structure what structure <laughs> There's no structure. At all? Ah, no structure. Mm. I, no, there's no structure. I don't think so. There's just entrepreneurs. Everybody's really trying really hard, you know, to make it work in this industry. Mm -hmm. Everybody's an independent person, mm. seeking help from friends, family, um, investors, and so on and so forth. But there's no real structure that, yeah. you know, really supports creatives. I'm not even talking about musicians, but generally, you know, real dance schools proper um, media houses that or uh, schools that teach you know uh, um, filmmaking in, mm -hmm. a, in a really top level um, music schools that are teaching music engineering um, uh, computer um, science because yeah. it's all you know it, it all adds up mm -hmm. so when I talk about industry that's what I mean like building a real foundation that supports the creative arts because mm -hmm. you know so, so now we, people are just chasing the money. Chalo, be a new bit to me, ayo. Whatever will bring money yeah, yeah, quickly. Chalo, yeah, and I, I'm not it. complaining. Yeah. I, it's just the way things are, mm, you know. Mm. We're all just, yeah, scrambling. You know, I've been listening to your music for some time, but I'm very curious about two songs. Wow. And I want to know what you were thinking, what your thought process was yeah. around that time. Yeah. 2011, 2012. It's me. You said your mother taught you how to write in Fanti. Yes. So you wrote Fanti Love Song. Yes. And Obo. Then Killer Willie Pimping. Oh my God, yes. That's all you're thinking about. <clears throat> so, Killer Willie Pimping is a very interesting song. Eh? I have one of my cousins who I grew up with. Yeah. I was here, he was in Abruzzi, and he used to come on summer holidays. Right. And he'd be learning fancy small, small. Okay. So, when I actually wrote Killer Willie Pimping, I think I was in London. Mm -hmm. We were in my flat. And when I played the beats for him, he just put together the two Ghanaian words that he knows. Or like, Killer Willy and Pimpin. It's like, bro, this does not make sense, but it sounds cool as hell. I mean, I don't understand myself. I'm like, I mean, why? Why? Killer what is that? Pimpin, say, say. Hey, so I just took the plantain that is used to make Killer Willy. I thought plantain goes in an oven. Yeah. You can totoon it or you can fry it and then kind of make it a sexual in, in, in Wendu. And <laughs> the rest was history. <laughs> and yeah. If you've not watched the video, I better go and watch the video. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. And I'm, I'm like, Okay, were, 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 you, were you in love at that time? Because that came after Fancy Love Song. Yes, yes. 
It did. It and did. Fancy Love Song, I've listened to it. Yes. I've watched the video. Yeah. I, I, I've seen you do your thing in yeah. there. I'm like, okay, what was Mensa going through? Yeah. You know? Because for me, it was a departure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From, from the Mensa yeah, that yeah. I, I know. Yeah, yeah. You know, the thing is, I have some people around me who are always daring me to do things. This is really what it is. Ah, oh, Mensa, you know, you should sing. You should sing in Fanti. Yeah. Oh, you should do this. Uh, yeah. Then me too, like a fool. I was like, okay. Why not? You know, so that Fancy Love song was for me. Mm -hmm. Like when I was listening to CK Man, um, uh, um, Elijah Kiff from Pong, mm -hmm. all these kind of dope yeah. high life artists, um, you know, all of them, Kojinchi, all of them. I was like, okay, Papa Youngson. I was like, okay, I'm Fancy, you know, I know what it's like, you know, my dad and um, what's it called, Ambule and all these guys, yeah. like how they talk yeah. and how they express, yeah. you know, what would it be like for me to write a love mm -hmm. song? And the, the whole premise of the song actually is thinking about my girlfriend when Doomso has happened. In Suruto, we Doom Kanya. That's yeah. the first. <laughs> so I use our trauma <laughs> to create. Your music. trauma became your inspiration. Yeah, but to think of it that I was stressing about Doomso around that time, 2009, 2010. Right. It's. it's it's been going on for a while. Yeah, it's still here. Oh, no, no. no right now, there's no. Right now, everything is fine. <laughs> right now, there's no doom. Yeah. Everything if it comes, is fine. If you come to dance, so man. Clear light. <laughs> <laughs> so, those of you who live in dance, man, corroborate this for me. Do we have light talks in dance, man? <laughs> no. The one that happened two days ago for 24 hours is in your mind. What happened two days ago? <laughs> 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 well, all happened in Dan Suman two days ago. Said, because uh, there's no doom, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. But no. people were complaining, but I think they were confused. Well, what were they confused about? That the fridge was off, the cheese was not happening, air conditioning, fun, computers, internet, all off. I was like, ah. Uh, or it could be they didn't put a switch on. They didn't just there. switch on the lights, ah. the meter. Ah. So, like, all the homes in Dan Suman that did not have lights. They all made the same mistake at the same time. At so, the same for time. For 24 hours. <laughs> And there's no Doomso in Dansoman. Because it's a Pechepe area. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. At... anybody who complains about Doomso is hating on their current government. They are hating. Because it's perfect. Which part of Dansoman do you live at? The, the good part. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I mean, you were frustrated about Doomso at the, at the time. And yes. the fact that your girlfriend too at the point, and then yeah. where Doomso is. Yeah. So no, that one, they were using it to inspire my music. So, right. Doomso so, is good. And, and now, what is it doing to you? To inspire <laughs> my music. Because <laughs> I, I, I make ready to go studio. Mm. Mm. <laughs> this next question. <laughs> you know what? Let's take, let's, take, let's take a listen to one of my favorites. One of my favorites when it comes to uh, Mensa songs. And Mensa will tell me, he told us the story behind it. But listen to it. So, wow. Yeah. yeah. Mensa. <laughs> I was young. <laughs> I mean, that's Kelly Willie Pimping. Yes. And that's why I'm asking him what he was thinking about when he was writing this music. Yeah, I mean, man. It's a, it's a sharp departure. Yeah. So Mensa is talking about the hard issues, making you know, like, yeah. Charlie, I know what's going on. I think it's also really like, yeah. I mean, so, so I, I took the. The angle, the POV of like a young man who has a, who likes a girl, mm -hmm. but is still living in his parents' house. Yeah, and by that time, your mother was not around. Hey, so I invited them over, you know, to kind of for a nice time. We are warming the oven. Yes. To roast the plantain. Yes. Okay. Okay. And okay. philosophically. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you have the song, Bisa. Yes. And that speaks to how we do not allow people to ask questions and then, well, the children are always mm. wrong. You don't mm. have to question the mm. adult mm. and all of that. Mm. And now you're telling me your, your kids basically run the house. They, and, they're and ruining my life. They ruin your yeah. life in total. But, but has, that, has that phenomenon changed for you over the years from the time you put that ab out? Absolutely. I'm, well, I mean, I don't, in the world, no. But, you know, I, I, for me, mm -hmm. um, one of the key things in my career and in my, in my lyric writing is to advocate for people, right. especially children and women. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's a song, this is the Bisa, you know, um, 
the BISA actually is, is a sort of acronym, which um, bold infancy secured adulthood. Right. So when a child is raised to be confident, to be able to think critically, to be able to ask questions, to question status quo, mm -hmm. they grow up to be an adult who seeks truth and is, has a good conscience. Mm. So yeah, that's what BISA, BISA was about. And really, it was, it was really a reflection of me being a new parent okay. and encouraging my children to ask questions and not to be intimidated by people who say, oh, a child should be seen and not be heard and mm -hmm. all those kinds mm -hmm. of nonsensical things. Right. You know? So yeah, it was just me really advocating for young people and students. And also, as the, you know, our relationship with younger people and how we need to give them space. Right. And um, to be able to, to, to be curious, mm. you know, I think it's important. Mm. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. And, and, and so when um, I listen to Question for the Gods, you were manifest. Shout out. Of, if I don't ask this, people will roast me. Right. You, one love. Yes. What's the love story? And the, the love story. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, the synergy between yeah, you guys yeah, yeah, yeah. has always been I'm, of I, the chain. Absolutely. Um, so, so we went to the same school, we went to Adesado College. Mm -hmm. Shout out, shout out to the monochrome school, black and white. And he was my senior. And when I went, I heard that there was a rebel in the school. And soon we became friends. We were in the same um, house. What, what is it about you? I mean, kill, now one love. Every, like, that's where you yeah. gravitate towards. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, 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 uh, yeah, <laughs> rebels, you know? It, because, you know, and also kind of comes back to Bisa, where it's like, if you feel stifled, you, you, you rebel, you know, mm. so when you find uh, like-minded people, I think you kind of, you know, you, you, you congregate. Yeah. yeah. So, and then, you know, he was one person who really understood, like, the way my mind worked and, and vice versa and so on and so forth. Mm. So we used to really run away from school and just write lyrics and stuff like that. Yeah. And then he left and went to Yankee and then we kind of met again. And that's how Cause of Money was born. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and since then, you know, we really just tapped into our childhood and our teenage years living in Ghana and all the joys, all the education, the sense of family, mm -hmm. the community, but also all the messed up things that yeah. you know, we had to endure. And that's where really FUKN is, is, is coming from. It's right. like tapping into the, the rebellious young person in us. Mm. And so we just, but the idea also is that we didn't want to be like, you know, conscious musicians who just like complaining and just like we're angry, always upset. Yeah. How do you make light of the situation? Exactly. And it's through satire. That's right. yeah, so just try and make funny jokes, but chook them in the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I remember yeah. your joint in 2020. I see the video, I'm like, okay, Charlie, the guy's going really hard on politics and all yeah, like that. Yeah. But I mean, let's talk about new music. You have new music out? Yes, yes, yes. So um, I'm doing a, a three part um, EP. So it's three EPs okay. in the space of a year. So the first, one is is about to be out soon. About uh, to be out. Yes, right. yes. Right. And um, so the first thing is Obano, mm. and really it's like a mixture of high life, Afro beats, Afro pop, and um, some kind of experimental things. Always just reimagining what the music would be like if it was left for me to you know make it evolve. You know. <laughs> so I really love what's happening. Out there. Like Nigerians are making incredible music. Yeah. Ghanaians, you know, also doing some interesting stuff. Yeah. So my focus is to create some interesting music, but also touch on slightly deep, slightly more layered things relation, relationship-wise. Mm -hmm. So yeah. be it romantic, be it family, our relationship with our parents, our friends, and with ourselves, our insecurities, just touching on these kind of layers of things. Right. Right? And, and, but doing this in a very Ghanaian way. Ghanian yeah, 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 yeah. You've never lost your originality. Oh, no, no, you can't, because yeah, then yeah, yeah, after yeah. that, you don't have anything left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? You know? Well, I, I just wish we had like eight hours more to talk, because we could have exhausted so much. But man, I'm grateful. Thank you, you so much. The Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. Charlie, so you know what? Let's enjoy Obano. Obano. Uh, yeah, that's what my producer. My, it's not my fault. It's my producer. My, my producer. <laughs>